David Laskin's 2004 work, The Children's Blizzard, is a compelling piece of nonfiction that recounts the harrowing events of the infamous blizzard of 1888, which swept through the Great Plains region of the United States. Laskin, who has delved into various historical subjects, including The Long Way Home, An American Journey from Ellis Island to the Great War, 2010, sheds light on American immigrant soldiers. Additionally, he contributes to the travel section of the New York Times. The book's introduction sets the stage by describing how, on January 12, 1888, a cold front descended from Montana to Nebraska, causing temperatures to plummet by 18 degrees Fahrenheit in just three minutes. The timing of this extraordinary blizzard was particularly devastating due to the dense population resulting from the Homestead Act of 1862, which transformed the once-labeled Great American Desert. In the prologue, Laskin grimly notes that the blizzard claimed the lives of between 250 and 500 children, famously including schoolchildren sent home as casualties. Subsequent chapters delve into the period between 1850 and 1900, a time when 16.5 million people migrated from Europe, especially Norwegians, Germans, and Ukrainians who ventured beyond East Coast cities to the Midwest, often reuniting with relatives. The narrative extends several centuries before the blizzard, exploring the journeys of individual families from their local cities to major shipping centers in London and finally to New York's immigration center, at Garden Castle. This bustling hub teamed with city officials, transportation services, money exchangers, and countless families with children utilizing these services. Laskin explains that economic circumstances drove many families to immigrate. For instance, the Norwegian couple Ole and Gro Rålag settled in Iowa to avoid the partitioning of their family farm with each successive generation. Families like Anna and Johan Kaufmann, known as Schweitzers, faced religious ostracism for their stance against infant baptism leading them to emigrate from Germany to Russia under Catherine the Great. However, when Tsar Alexander II withdrew protections, these German enclaves were compelled to send their children to Russian schools, prompting many, including the Kaufmans, to choose emigration. In these initial sections, Laskin paints a vivid picture of a resilient group of people enticed by the promise of America, yet deceived by railroad companies' advertisements overseas which presented a false image of mild winters and fertile soil. After introducing five immigrant families who established roots in the Dakota Territory, Nebraska, and Iowa, Laskin delves into the scientific explanations behind the devastating storm. At the time, the field of meteorology was in its infancy, with no modern meteorologists, but rather indication officers, as designated by the Army, the primary national supporter of a weather service. The storm's low-pressure pattern originated over the Pacific Ocean, traversed the Rockies, reached Alberta, Canada on January 11, and entered Montana on January 12. Simultaneously, a cold front from Wyoming moved south, while a warm front from Nebraska moved north, causing deceptively low temperatures on the morning of the storm, reported as 30 degrees in Denver. By afternoon, Army Signal Corps observers reported winds at 40 miles per hour. The storm, propelled by the convergence of two weather patterns and high wind speeds, moved swiftly, reaching between 60 and 70 miles per hour near Lincoln, Nebraska. Laskin attributes Lt. Thomas Woodruff's inadequate storm forecast in St. Paul, Minnesota, to his lack of meteorological training. The latter portion of the book explores the storm's impact from the imagined perspective of its victims and recounts the memoirs of those left bereft of family members. Laskin vividly describes the physical toll of frostbite, leading to limb amputation, and the lethal consequences of hypothermia. Due to the morning thaw, parents sent their children to school with inadequate clothing. As the blizzard intensified at 10.30 a.m., schools released students, forcing them and teachers to seek shelter in haystacks and caverns on their way home. Two children, Walter Allen and Lena Wobeck, ventured out and faced peril. The blizzard's severity hindered visibility, yet husbands braved the elements in search of their families. Anna Kaufman discovered her three children lifeless in the snow, reacting with an inexplicable laughter. Laskin highlights the courage of school teachers who willingly exposed themselves to extreme cold to assist their students. The Omaha Daily Bee, in particular, covered these heroic acts to raise funds for affected school teachers and families. Laskin elucidates how the storm not only claimed several hundred lives, but also incurred trillions of dollars in costs for the country. 
He urges the nation to acknowledge this overlooked natural disaster that struck the Great Plains over a century ago. Upon its release, the children's blizzard garnered numerous accolades, including the Midwest Booksellers' Choice for Nonfiction, the Pacific Northwest Booksellers' Award, and the Washington State Book Award. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.